Welcome to A Game From A Box, this is Sergio AM, and on this episode of Hauled, Nintendo Switch Edition, we're catching up with 10 more Nintendo Switch and Switch Lite gadgets, gizmos, and accessories you need to know about. This is episode 8. <laughs> One of the Switch Lite's best features is its portable size, but unlike the 3DS which can close in on itself to keep everything in there safe, to protect the light screen and analog sticks, you're gonna have to use something like a carrying case or our current favorite, the official flip cover. It's a minimalist and stylish hard shell case wrapped in a durable gray fabric that feels great in hand while also providing a good amount of protection. The console pops right in and the cover has a magnetic closure with just the right amount of strength. As you can see, it adds little to no bulk, it's very low profile, and we love how it looks with this minimalist design. Over on the back, we have cutouts for the vents. Below that, another to charge it, and easily open it. Now, when using the Switch, it sort of hangs out and flaps around, not a big deal, but worth mentioning because I know it might annoy some of you. Also, no, you can't use it as a stand. As for protection, mostly everything is covered, including the analog sticks via these indents, but the shoulder and trigger buttons remain exposed. So it should be fine bumping around your bag, but I wouldn't be surprised if those corners took some damage after a drop. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple and to the point, but makes it so you can both protect your Switch Lite while still having quick access to it. To celebrate the release of Animal Crossing New Horizons, Hori's releasing a ton of accessories, many of which are slowly being shipped our way, but we did get our hands on the Aloha edition of their carrying case. It's available for both the Switch and Switch Lite, this one being the latter, and it's wrapped in that iconic Animal Crossing leaf pattern, colorized in white, light blue, and turquoise. As for protection, it's not hard shell, but it is rugged enough to defend against bumps and light drops. To get in there, we have a hideaway zipper, and inside it's pretty bare bones. At the bottom, we have the slot for the Switch Lite, and then a screen protecting flap with eight game card slots on the other side. Now above that we have a net for accessories, but as you'll notice, since the case is about a perfect fit, there's not much that can go in there outside of something like a charging cable or earbuds. And even that is a bit much. So if you're an Animal Crossing fan looking for a stylish minimalist case and don't mind the lack of storage inside, it's worth checking out. And as I said, we do have other Animal Crossing products headed our way, which Kate is going to take a closer look at. So keep an eye out for that and follow us on Instagram so she can keep you posted. This is the 3UP Sling Bag by Villager. It's a stylish Switch bag that reminds me of a puffer jacket with retro 80s aesthetics. When it comes to design and construction, the 3UP is top notch. It's made with a handful of premium materials with a lot of attention to detail, and the price sort of reflects that. The exterior is made of a water-resistant nylon and weaved fabrics. There's large YKK zippers for each compartment. And on the front, we have a D-ring for things like your keys or keychains. To carry it, the 3UP comes with a lanyard and an adjustable shoulder strap. Both attach via this fastener or screw on the back, which is a decent idea, but you gotta be careful because it's pretty easy to lose. And once you do, uh, this feature is pretty much useless. Now inside, the first compartment is lined with a smooth ripstop nylon, and we have three slots that work well for Joy-Cons, earbuds, a game card case, a small power bank, things like that, but I do wish these compartments were adjustable to fit more things. Then all the way on the back, we have a flat pocket, which we normally use for our phone or a notebook. Finally, we have a wide opening main compartment for the Switch that is lined with a soft, heathered fabric surrounded by thick, impact-resistant foam to protect the Switch. In here, we also have a screen protecting divider with 10 game card slots. And last but not least, up on the other side, we have a little port so you can charge the Switch with a power bank on the other side. So if you're looking for a stylish bag to carry your Switch and the essentials that will last past this console's lifetime, the 3UP is definitely worth checking out. Since the last episode, 8 Doe has released two new gamepads for the Switch, so let's check those out. First up, if you hate Joy-Con drift, well, you're gonna love 8-Bit Doe's light gamepad. It's a portable pocket-sized controller with not one, but two D-pads. But before we talk about those, things you should know. It's wireless with an 18-hour battery life, charges via USB-C, you've got two modes, either for the Switch or X input, so yes, it's multi-platform compatible. Then we have a turbo mode, but sadly not for the Switch, it's only for X input. 
Now the shape is similar to the Switch, but as someone with big hands, it's not the most ergonomic. This leads to moments where my grip would cause me to accidentally hit L and R due to their elongated shape, and the left D-pad was difficult to use precisely unless I moved my fingers behind the gamepad. Next, the layout is almost identical to the Switch with the same amount of buttons including L3 and R3 on the D-pad, but pressing them in can cause accidental inputs. Then, instead of triggers, R2 and L2 are in line with L and R, and every single button including the D-pads are clicky, similar to the face buttons on the Joy-Cons, so you can feel every single actuation. Alright, on to the D-pads. On the Switch, these emulate analog sticks, but they only have 8 points of input, no pivot, and they're digital. So unlike an analog stick, they're not the best for games that require precise incremental movements for something like aiming or camera controls. So it's a unique experience with those games, but it's not meant for them. Instead, it's better for 2D fighting games, beat-em-ups, platformers, puzzle games, etc. As for the extra D-pad, the idea seems very niche, and I don't think most people will make use of it, but at this price point, it makes for an awesome little retro pad to take on the go. For those looking for the most portable retro controller out there, look no further than 8 Does Zero 2. This latest version of the gamepad improves on a handful of things while keeping that adorable miniature form factor. It's available in three colors to match the Switch Lite, but it's also multi-platform compatible. Things you should know, it's a little under two and a half inches and weighs in at just 20 grams. It's wireless. It has an indicator LED at the bottom, an eight hour battery, which charges via micro USB, sadly not USB-C, and it also comes with a silicone wrist lanyard, but you can do as we did and instead attach a keychain so you can hang it on your bag or keys. Now the D-pad and face buttons are mushy while the L, R, select and start buttons are clicky. Overall, they work well, no complaints there, but due to its small size, it's not the most ergonomic controller out there, which makes using the shoulder buttons a bit difficult with that grip. But on the other hand, that size makes it perfect to just leave it in your carrying case so it's ready whenever you need it. Now, when using it with the Switch, keep in mind that it doesn't have ZL, ZR, Capture, or Home buttons, and obviously no analog sticks, so it's not compatible with games that require those. Instead, this tiny gamepad is best for retro games such as 2D platformers, beat-em-ups, fighters, and they specifically targeted Nintendo's NES and SNES game library by including a button combination for ZL and ZR by pressing in both Select and Start so you can access that Suspend menu. In the end, this makes for an awesome little retro game companion, especially for those who don't want to buy extra Joy-Cons. Now before we continue, this video is brought to you by our friends over at NordVPN. Did you know that if you use your internet browser in incognito or privacy mode, your internet provider, your ISP, can still track the websites you visit? And if that's not enough, at least here in the States, they can legally sell that data. Well, what's wrong with that? I, that's a weird voice, but uh, everything is wrong with that. With NordVPN, you can safely and privately browse the internet by rerouting your IP address so it appears as if you're in another location. This way, your ISP sees a stream of encrypted traffic and everyone else sees you connecting from, say, Sweden. But there's more. With NordVPN, you can securely access open Wi-Fi connections, avoid ISP throttling, access geo-blocked content, and much more. So head over to nordvpn.org slash it came from a box and use code it came from a box to get 70% off NordVPN plus an extra month for free. Guys, I use it myself every day and that's the only reason I recommend it. We're huge Mario Kart fans here. It's one of our favorite multiplayer games. And in last year's gift guide, we mentioned Hori's Mario Kart Racing Wheel Pro Mini that gives you a fun, immersive way to race, which we said this about. Right off the bat, it looks like a toy, and it pretty much is. It's plasticky, but the wheel works well. It's very springy and responsive, and I like that the pedals are optional. Now, the whole thing is pretty small, so if you're an adult child like myself, you're probably better off with the deluxe version, which is larger with a more modern design. Since then, we did get our hands on the deluxe version, which upgrades just about everything. It's larger. Same goes for the foot pedals, which are full size with way better resistance. Back to the wheel, it's wrapped in rubber to increase your grip. It has a better button layout. They've also added ZR and ZL buttons to the wheel itself. The paddles on the back are bigger and clicky, and you have two mounting options to choose from. 
Overall, it's a very cool peripheral that makes it feel like you're playing the arcade version of Mario Kart, and keep in mind, you can also use it with other racing games, including from other platforms. Charging grips are a great way to extend the life of the Switch while also improving on the ergonomics of it. We've checked out a few in the past, but the Charge Play Clutch by HyperX brings a few new features to the table. It's made up of three pieces. The first in the center is this 6000 milliamp battery, which gives you an extra 5 hours of playtime. At the bottom, we have a USB-C connection and a latch at the top to secure the console. On the back, we have a power button and four charging indicator LEDs. To the right of it, we have a USB-C port to charge the battery. And above that, we have a kickstand that you can use in multiple angles. Next, we have two Joy-Con grips, which magnetically connect together and both have nice textured ergonomic grips that feel great in hand. To use them in tabletop mode, either together or individually, you gotta use the pop-up rails to hold the Joy-Cons in place and you're good to go. Next, for handheld mode, you have to remove the Joy-Cons, drop the rails, attach the grips to the battery, and slide the Joy-Cons on the Switch. And yes, if you change between modes a lot, that will get a bit tedious. Now in use, the grips feel better, but it does add some weight to the Switch. So if that bothers you, you can just attach it when your battery is running low or simply use it in tabletop mode. That aside, the benefit of an extra five hours of battery life along with a better grip definitely make the charge play clutch an option worth considering. If you want to get a better grip on the Switch Lite, you can't do better than those by Satisfy and Skull & Co. As someone with big hands, I have a lot of love for Satisfy's original Switch Grip, but their smaller Switch Grip Lite, or I believe it's now called their Zen Grip Lite, is just as awesome. It's currently only available in white, which nicely complements the buttons on the normal Switch Lite, and it's pretty much a shrunken down version of the original, along with the same features. That being the asymmetrical design to better align your thumb with the right analog stick, which does help reduce fatigue, those large textured grips that enhance the ergonomics and make it feel really good in hand, what they call their float design where the inner silicone tabs prevent the switch from touching or scraping against the grip. Plus, it can also stand on its own so you can charge it with an angled cable and use it in tabletop mode, albeit not in the best angle. Now, as soon as you hold it, the Zen Grip Lite just feels right. And it makes the Switch Lite way more comfortable to use for a longer period of time, which is why it's a personal favorite. Now, because it does make the Switch Lite bigger, it won't fit in a normal carrying case, which is why they also sell it in two bundles. The first is their Slim Bundle with a minimalist, low-profile case, and the second is their Elite Bundle, perfect for those who want to carry it along with a few accessories. Skull & Co.'s original grip case for the Switch became popular because it both provided protection along with interchangeable grips, and the same applies to their latest, Grip Case Lite. This time around, we now have a transparent soft TPU case so you can show off the color or design of your Switch Lite, and it has cutouts for everything except the microSD card slot. So the back and each side is protected, same as the original grip case, that also includes the shoulder buttons which, love it or hate it, changes how they feel, but should provide a good amount of protection against drops. So we have three sets of grips. The snap grip is low profile with lines throughout which makes it easy to hold. The plus grip is larger and rounded out to fill your hand. And the trigger grip is about the same size, but with a spot to rest your finger on. Attaching them is different than the previous version as well with a sliding system instead of clips. It's pretty straightforward, but can be a bit tricky if you don't line them up perfectly. Also, keep in mind that you can mix and match these to whatever suits you best. Very cool. Now, because of the size of the larger grips, it won't fit into most carrying cases, which is why they also sell a bundle with their Max Carry Case Lite. So if you're looking to both protect your Switch Lite and enhance its ergonomics with interchangeable grips, we can safely recommend Skull & Co's Grip Case Lite. We've tested a ton of Joy-Con grips, but this next one is the most versatile we've come across. This is the GamePal Multifunction Joy-Con Grip. So first thing you'll notice is that it looks and feels cheap. Just being honest, but one thing they did right was nail functionality. So there's two parts to it, the grip itself and the inserts. The grip feels really good in hand, they're just the right size and curve enough to ease your fingers into the shoulder and trigger buttons. Next, the two inserts. The first is for using a set of Joy-Cons together. We actually like using it detached and it's perfect to also travel with since it keeps them together. On top of that, it also has a USB-C port at the top to charge the Joy-Cons. The second insert is for a single Joy-Con to use individually. 
In this mode, it enhances the SL and SR buttons and has holes on the back to easily eject the Joy-Con. Finally, you just slide in the one you want and you're all set. So it may not be the best looking grip out there, but it's by far the most versatile and that's why we bought four of them. And there you go, another 10 and we've got a lot more to catch up on, so expect another episode soon. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see next, please let us know in the comments. And if you're looking to pick up anything featured in this video and want to support us at the same time, please check out the affiliate links down in the description below. You guys are what keeps us going and we truly appreciate you. Once again, this is Sergio IM and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out. So please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.